Welcome to the Far Side channel. This is our series on business owner challenges. Today I am joined by Matthew Iola from Freelance Matthew. Matthew is a copywriter and content creator and I'm quite excited to chat to him. Welcome Matthew. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much Tamarina. I'm very happy to be here. It's always a pleasure to do these things with you. Thanks Matthew. So I want to start with tell me about your business and how you got into copywriting and what problem you solve for your clients. So um, the problem I solve for my clients is basically I help them communicate their message better, you know, and that could be towards drawing new clients for their business or new customers. It could be selling their products or service, you know, and it might just be trying to help them get themselves out there, you know, because without visibility, then you are not really, you know, you're not going to get any customers and stuff. So it's, um, it was a very interesting path for me. I sort of went around um, many different fields and industries before I finally settled on copywriting. So I started out as a physical therapist in the university. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, when I finished um, and I did my sort of internship program and, you know, I was like a full scale physiotherapist, I decided that this isn't really what I want to do for some personal reasons. And it turns out that I am not very comfortable around sick people. It's just, it makes me feel so, uh, <laughs> feel things that I don't want to feel uh, on a daily basis. So, so not um, the career for you. Yeah, no, it just, it, it wasn't going to work out. <laughs> Uh, so I looked around for a bit to see what I was interested in because I, you know, I really wanted to do something that I enjoyed. Mm. And I stumbled upon this um, job opening for um, a marketer at a brand and consulting firm. So basically they help businesses to brand, you know, themselves, you know, re refine their image, make them more appealing to their customers. And so that's kind of like where the whole copywriting thing started for me. So while I was there, I started to write um, content for their clients and then for the company's website, you know. So um, about a year later, I left and then I, you know, went around a little bit more, tried to start a business. It didn't really work out because I was very naive and I underestimated how much money I would need to actually get the thing up and running. <laughs> so I basically bought through my savings and I had nothing to show for it. <laughs> Yeah, so um, eventually, um, by, then, by then I was writing on the side to sort of pay my bills and stuff. So I landed the remote gig with the um, copywriting agency in Ukraine, you know, and that sort of just led me down this path of working with agencies and then deciding to go off on my own, and, you know, work with people by myself and land clients and stuff like that. So that kind of led to where I am right now. That's such a, it's a very interesting pathway from physical therapy to content writing. It's uh, yeah. But you know, when I speak to a lot of the, the business owners I speak to, they're not doing what they studied uh, in varsity or what they thought they were going to be doing as a career. I think we, we find our path as we go. Um, I mean, I, I didn't study accounting. I didn't set out to be an accountant. I set out to be a psychologist. So, really? so yeah. So it's it's not an uncommon thing for me to chat to people and discover that you're in totally opposite uh, career paths than you expected when you were young. Uh, yeah. So I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing to find yourself and find what makes you happy. <laughs> Thank you. So what has been on this road? Because, I mean, going from such diverse paths you would have you would have encountered a couple of challenges and you already mentioned that you you underestimated how much money you needed what would you say was your biggest challenge do you think it was the cash flow or or was it other things uh, i think uh, my biggest challenge since i became a copywriter it would have to be um and this is um very nuanced i would say so it's basically matching what I am offering to what my clients need you know and it's it's um it's a very it's a very tricky thing because so when you're in business right you know what you offer say you offer you're selling pencils for example you know all you're thinking about is I need to move these pencils I need to find the people who need pencils you know so it's very difficult to switch um sort of your mindset to okay 
you know, what do people use pencils for? And, you know, if I'm trying to address their problems, then are pencils what I need to be selling? Or do I need to be selling the experience of holding a pencil? Or, you know, do I need to add an eraser to that? You know, so that's kind of like the sort of the biggest challenge that I had to face because in the beginning, um, I was just writing, you know, blogs and articles because I really enjoy writing them. You know, and so I would approach businesses and say, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, you know, let me write your blog, let me write your articles. But most of the businesses I approached were not looking for a blog or an article, you know. And so it took me a long time to realize that it's really not about them not wanting to work with me. It's just not something that they need at this point in time, you know. So many of them were, you know, struggling to attract clients and keep their clients. They, they needed cash flow. They didn't have enough cash flow to think about, you know, a blog and SEO and engaging their readers and all of these things, you know. So there was this thing that I was offering and it seemed like, you know, nobody wanted to buy it, you know. And so I had to sort of think about, first of all, you know, why am I selling this? And the people who will buy this from me, what are they really looking for, you know? So right now I do have clients who need blogs, you know, but I also offer a lot of other services, sales pages, emails, all of those things, because I've been able to switch from, I'm selling blogs, to yeah. I'm selling visibility. And so that visibility may come from blogging or it may come from a landing page, you know, or a LinkedIn post or stuff like that. So that would be the biggest challenge for me. That's a, it's a really good challenge to highlight, actually, because I think people don't realize how important that is. We, we know what we do and we know how we can make someone else's life easier. But the person you're speaking to, they might not understand how you can make their life easier, you know, uh, and, and they might not want what you're selling. They want something exactly, else. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, and they might, so they might want what you are selling, right, but not how you are selling it. You know? Exactly. Yes. So, yes. I, so for example, for example, I have a client right now, right? And so when we were talking, I was I, I really thought that what they needed was blog posts because I felt like they could benefit a lot from SEO, you know. But eventually we were able to settle on LinkedIn articles, right? So I would sort of write it in a blog style, but then I would be approaching a LinkedIn audience because they've been able to build, you know, their LinkedIn business page to have a ton of followers and they get reads every week. You know, so why they did need writing and blogs, you know, they just needed it in a slightly different format. And, you know, yeah. finding that, that pivot can be quite tricky. Yeah, it can be. It can be. I, I mean, I, just for myself, I know most people will go to an accountant because they've got a mess with their, their taxes. <laughs> That's most people. Most people starting out and they've got a business they run for a while and they don't even think about their accounting and then the next thing they know they haven't submitted tax returns for three years and and that's their big fear is like i i need to get my taxes in order um but i mean as a business owner you don't just need your tax returns in order you need accounting records you need you know to be able to track your performance you need to improve your cash flow you need to increase increase your profitability and it's the same thing is that you know i keep telling people Oh, I, we can improve your cash flow and 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 when they're panicking about the tax man they don't care <laughs> they just want yeah. their returns done you know so it is a challenge remembering that you've got to you've got to give that client what they need at that point in time there might be lots of things they need but there's one thing that is currently causing them pain and worry and that's the thing you've got to you've got to hand to them so yeah that's an important yeah. challenge to highlight so well done on, on recognizing that it's a challenge for one thing. It took it took a very long time. It was like, like why isn't this working? Why does nobody want blog posts? <laughs> it's <laughs> so very frustrating for sure. But I mean, that must now actually help you when you're writing content for clients because you're solving that same problem for them. Is are they the are they meeting their clients' need? And and can you write now content that will answer that question for that pain? So you, I mean, it's it's a good thing that you learned it for yourself because you can now carry that through into your content writing. Yeah, yeah, it definitely comes in handy. Definitely. Yeah. I um I have attended training with you before where you taught how to do a sales page, and I must say I found it fascinating. So I would like to know from you if you have a tip that you would share with those watching about copywriting about how you 
grab that person's attention and tell them that you can solve this problem? Yeah. Um, so the, the biggest thing is, in my opinion, also one of the most, um, I don't say depressing, but one of the saddest things about copywriting is it's not really, it's not fun, you know, it's not colorful and it's not about you. You know, so when you think of copywriting or marketing, think of something that is, you know, sexy, it's in vogue, it's exciting, it's fast moving, you know, I'm a copywriter, you know, I can make words, I can sell anything to anybody. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the exact opposite, you know, it's very, <laughs> it's very dry, it's very methodological, you know, there's a formula that you have to follow, you know, and it doesn't matter what you want to say, it doesn't matter how you think you want to say it, you know, if your audience are not going to resonate with it, then those words are useless, you know? And so mm -hmm. you have to be very cold hearted about it. You have to, you know, get the formula that works and just stick to it, regardless of what you think you might want to do. And even when you think you've done your best work, right? There's only really one metric, whether or not you've done your best work. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. You might be the best copywriter in the world. You might be the copywriter who wrote the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's really only one metric and that's, is it resonating with the people you are targeting? You know, do they read it and do they feel the things you want them to feel and are they compelled to do what you want them to do? If the answer to those two questions is no, then unfortunately you are failed. It's very painful to admit and realize, but it's just the truth. So that would be the, the one tip. I'm sorry to be a boss kill, but... <laughs> But it's a good tip. It's true. And, and you know, that's the thing is, is watch your metrics. You know, don't think that you wrote this, this amazing copy in this amazing sales page. If you're not getting sales off it, then you need to accept the fact that you might have to start again. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is your biggest business building challenge now? What are you currently trying to overcome? Uh, it's like, um, so for me, it would be, um, so the thing about me is I'm always thinking about, you know, what's next, you know, and I, I don't say that to, to sound, um, sort of like an influencer because, you know, I hear it all the time and people are saying, you know, I'm always thinking about the future. I'm always thinking about the next step. I'm thinking five steps ahead. And every time I hear that, I roll my eyes like, oh, who is this person? <laughs> you know? Uh, but really I'm always, because. I've been in so many situations where, you know, you you have just gotten here and you are you are sort of enjoying what's happening. And then all of a sudden things change, you know, the pandemic happens, um, your client goes out of business or they say, you know, we're pivoting so we no longer need you. And, you know, just like that, everything has changed and now you have to go back to the drawing board and start all over, you know. So that has happened to me often enough for me to know that, you know, you cannot just stay here, wherever here is for you. Once you are there and you sort of have things running, you need to start thinking about, you know, what's next. You know, mm. And then start moving towards it so that, you know, if things change, then you are sort of protected. And even if things don't change, you know, now you have diversified and sort of you're in a better place in your business, you know. So that being said, the biggest business building challenge for me right now is being able to balance, you know, running my business. And by that, I mean acquiring clients, and you know, actually doing the work. Because copywriting is um, very time consuming. You know, you have to do a lot of research, you have to tweak and tinker and all of those things. It's very time consuming and it takes a lot of mental energy. You know, mm -hmm. so I have to allocate enough resources to doing that. At the same time, you know, think about what's next and try to, you know, build towards that, you know. So it's a it's a delicate balance. If I give too much attention to building what's next, then uh, I'm not going to make enough money to pay my bills. And if I pay too much attention to making money, you know, then I am at risk for the future, you know. So that would that's the, the biggest thing that I'm sort of wrestling with right now. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a big thing. And again, uh, you've highlighted a very good challenge that a lot of people don't think about uh, because we do tend to get very entrenched in the day to day and our operations. You know, so we we give everything to providing our service and providing our product uh and we forget that that you can't be here forever things are going to yeah. change people might not need your product tomorrow the there might be software that comes out I mean, if you look at my my industry 30 years ago accounting was probably the safest profession in the world 
you you had to have an accountant you needed help with your taxes it it was a safe thing now we have software that does i don't know about three quarters of our job yeah for us and you do still need a person to help you with with the decisions and with the software and you know the things and setting it up and things like that but our profession has changed completely in the way that we provide these services and people there are still accountants stuck in the old way of doing things and they are going to go out of business at some stage because the world will move on so it is it's a very delicate balance where you've got to go okay i've got to provide this fantastic service because i need to, i need to do a good job for this client first of all for myself yeah. and secondly so that they pay me and thirdly <laughs> so that they tell other people about me you know and i keep my reputation i also need to bring in the next client because this job is going to finish and i you know i need to to keep that pipeline and i need to make sure that my business is growing and that I'm creating a business and I haven't just created a job for myself that I just get stuck in and, and work myself to death in. So yeah, it's it's a it's a big challenge trying to balance all of those things and and get that that right in terms of of having the only tip I can give you for that one is scheduling. Mm, okay. Use scheduling you know, control your calendar. So you, you can you can give time to copywriting, give time to building your business, get time to taking time off <laughs> so that you don't just burn out. You yeah. use the power of scheduling. That's that's the best tip I can give you for for that particular challenge. Because it's a hard one. Yeah, it is. Um so Oh, no, I'm definitely going to add scheduling. And um, what I do right now is I have a to-do list, right? So, because I, I don't know what's happening, but I feel like my short-term memory span is just reducing and reducing. So you can tell me to do something now. And I Im immediately I go back to work. I've already forgotten. So, so <laughs> yeah. I need to put my to-do list immediately, you know? And so I have, a, I have an order. I have a hierarchy. And when you tell it to me, I decide how important it is this thing. So I either move it to the top, to the bottom, or somewhere. Mm -hmm. in you know, so if it's not in the to-do list, either I forgot or I don't think it's important enough to do. So I probably won't do it. Uh, so yeah, me too. I must say, I used to have excellent memory and over time. It's, it's also, I think it's a combination of having too much on your brain and the stress levels going too high. Um, but yeah, if I don't write it down, it's not going to happen. So I use uh, Asana because it's got a, it's got a phone app and it's got a web app and it, you know, it sends you emails and it does reminders and and the moment I say I'm going to do something, I pick my phone up and put it in a sauna. <laughs> otherwise, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you one last question is what piece of life changing advice would you give your younger self if you had the chance? You know, I was um I was thinking about this question, and the truth is, you know, I feel like nothing I say now would have sort of resonated with my younger self, because you know I'm in such a different place. It's 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 ridiculous. It's just like the changes kept on coming, and now I'm doing something so different. I'm thinking so different. I have different habits, a different circle of friends compared to who I was, you know, um, seven, six years ago. So I feel like most of the things I say now probably <laughs> won't even make any sense to him, you know. Um, but the one thing I thought about is, um, and it's probably, it's very, it's very niche, very nuanced, might not apply to everybody, but it's, um, so most course certificates are useless, but you should take them anyway. So by that, I mean, when I first started copywriting, I was, we got to take as many courses as possible because I wanted to have certificates to show that, look, I've done this course, so I must know what I'm talking about. But the truth is nobody cares. Nobody cares about your certificates. I have actually never spoken to a client and then they said, you know, can I see some of your certificates or how many? Nobody even asks me, nobody asks me, um, what's your sort of English speaking level? Or you just, nobody cares, you know, as long as you can get the job done. It's like you, you didn't study psychology. Eh, sorry, you studied psychology, but you didn't study accounting and here you are. Nobody's going to ask you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? 
you know, but some of those courses are still very valuable because they they aggregate the knowledge, you know. So if you were to gather knowledge yourself, it would take you weeks and months just to go over the internet to get a resource from here, from a blog there, a video here, but they sort of compacted it into a simple to follow um program. So that would that would probably be the biggest benefit to me of taking the course. But the certificate, you are you're not gonna need it, you know. So yeah, that's yeah. that's one advice I would give my younger self. I think it's excellent advice. I, I I've I've got a big uh, thing for continuous learning. I think a continuous self improvement and growing is really important, and is why we have the business builder. Um, is is that that idea of 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 just continually improving where you are. But yeah, it's exactly what you say. You don't do it for a certificate because no one cares. No one cares about that piece of paper. It's it's for you. It's for you to know that you've grown and you've learned more and you're going to be better at what you do because you took this course. You're going to be a better business owner and a better person and a, a better copywriter and whatever the case might be. That's why. That's why we learn. That's why we grow. And I, I think that's great advice. I think your younger self would hear you for that one. Yeah, it would definitely listen to that one because my younger self is very certificate hungry. He's trying to get <laughs> as many certificates as possible. <laughs> So he definitely that that is one thing he would he would listen to. Well, well I'm oh, curious. Though, I know you probably said this to everybody watching, but I'm curious. What is the one advice that you would give your younger self? To my younger self, mm -hmm. that's it's that's fine. No one's ever turned it back on me. Well done. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me. The biggest thing, and this is actually something I tend to say to any young people that 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 listen, you know, when when we're talking about careers, is don't don't get stressed about picking a lifetime career. Because I think that for me was a big. I mean, like I say to you, I speak to so many business owners, and they're not working in the sphere that they studied or that they thought that they would study, and when we when we're in school it's one of the first questions I throw at us is what do you want to be when you grow up and like how on earth are you supposed to know that as a six-year-old and you don't even know the jobs that exist I I'm 40 and I don't know all the jobs that exist in the world I mean there are careers out there that will blow your mind you didn't you didn't know that that thing existed so I think that's that's the advice I would give my younger self is don't get so stressed about finding that one thing you know, to build a career on um, and just just make sure that you you add value where you go and that you grow, you continually learn and you continually improve. I think that that for me would be important instead of, because I mean, I put a lot of, I had a very specific focus for my psychology and it was completely, I mean, I'm not a psychologist now, and it was so specific. So yeah, I think that would be my my advice. That, that was fantastic advice. And it, it reminds me of, you know, two separate conversations I had with people. One of them was, you know, when I decided I wasn't going to be a physical therapist anymore, um, one of my friends, so we both studied physical therapy, and she's a physical therapist now, very, quite successful. And so back then she was like, so does that mean, you know, all the years you spent in university was a waste? And I thought about it for a very long time, you know, but sometimes it's it's about the path you take to mm -hmm. get to where you're going, you know. So, you know, even though all of the things I study still come in handy because I still work as a sort of informal personal trainer. I have a lot of friends who take workout advice from me and sort of, you know, fitness and health has been a very huge part of my copywriting career. You know, and I use that knowledge every day when I go to the gym, every time when I talk to people who are trying to get in shape. And even all the connections I made in school, you know, some of them are still very valuable to me. So it's not really time wasted. It's just the path you took. It wasn't mm. conventional, but it got you to where you're going. I love that. That's fantastic. That's such a good, uh, and it's so true. It's so true. Because I, I think that is the thing. People are so terrified of wasting time by making a mistake. But you you don't. You don't ever waste time. If you learned something, you would never wasted that time. You can use it in just about anything. I mean, even, even if you weren't using it for your friends and, and you know, or, or your contacts, just the fact that you yourself know how to look after your body and exercise and be in shape. I mean, I experienced that uh, 2020 
I, I, I was between workload and the way things changed and all those things. I, I started doing things wrong and I ended up with um, tensinovitis, oh. which is uh, like an overwork of the tendons here. Yeah, so that, yeah, you know, the doctor thought it was carpal because uh, they're very similar. That's the same thing. It's overwork, overuse of, of something. Um, and I, I mean, I ended up not being able to use my thumbs for two, two months. So it's thumbs, try do anything without your thumbs. It's impossible. <laughs> okay. So, so just that, just your knowledge and how to actually look after yourself physically will make you a better business owner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's very interesting. The other, the other, um, conversation was, you know, in, I was talking with a copywriter. Is somebody I admire a lot. You know, he he has found remarkable success in his career. He has worked with all kinds of businesses that you know, the kind of businesses I hear about and think, wow, those guys are so up there. And this guy has sort of he has worked with all of them, and he's so down to earth that you know he still has time for a chat with me, and he's a very very cool person, you know. And so he was he was saying that, and it's very interesting because when we had this conversation, I was focusing on working with fitness coaches. Mm -hmm. fitness coaches specifically and so he was saying that you know um i've had a very interesting path from physical therapy you know to consulting and marketing branding and now to copywriting he said who knows today i'm focusing on you know fitness coaches tomorrow i might be focusing on cyber security <laughs> he said you know nobody knows so i should just try to keep it loose and i keep that in mind all the time because uh a friend of mine was telling me that they buy a career path called product management and, you know, I started looking into it and I was just fascinated. I didn't even know it existed. And who knows, tomorrow I might become a product manager. Nobody knows, you know. So you just, <laughs> you just have to sort of keep it loose and um, pay attention to all, all the opportunities that life brings your way, I think is the most important thing. That's awesome. It's a great way to approach life, to be open like that. So yeah. thank you so much for joining me, Matthew. I really enjoyed it this chat um if if people want to get hold of you after this uh, whether they just want to connect uh because they think you're cool or because they actually need a copywriter and they need some help uh, what is the best way of connecting with you the best way of connecting with me is to just send me an email um i have a website i have linkedin but i'm going to be honest with you if you are trying to reach me and you really want to chat just just send me an email because Otherwise, I it might take me a minute to get back to you if you reach out to me on LinkedIn. I will, but I mean, if it's urgent, just send me an email at matthew at contentstream.org. So that's my primary work email. If you send it, I will get it immediately. You know, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn at Matthew Iola and on my website at um, freelancematthew.com. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to share all three of those underneath the video. So uh, anyone who does want to connect with Matthew, you can do so. I will share the email first so that that's your primary contact. Um, but yeah, thank you, Matthew. Thank you so much for, for the chat. I really enjoyed it. I um, I think it's fantastic that you have such a, a open uh, view on, on life and growth and improvement. And I'm sure you're going to do well because of it so thank you for sharing your views today i'm sure they were very valuable to anyone watching yeah thank you so much for having me i've had a blast <laughs>